Hurricane Maria impacted the lives of many around the island of Puerto Rico. One survivor of the storm, Edric Toro, described his personal experience as follows. During Hurricane Maria, I lived in my apartment on the 20th floor of a building in Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. The government had recommended for all citizens that lived higher than the 10th floor to evacuate immediately. However, my family decided to do otherwise. Hurricane Maria was a tough experience for everyone in Puerto Rico. Some suffered more than others, but everyone had to deal with something. Sadly, I lost most of the windows in my apartment. There was more than a foot of water in my living room, and I had no power for over three months. Luckily, I have a generator in my building that would power certain things like the elevator and the plug to the refrigerator. In my apartment, it took over two years to get everything back together, yet we still haven't been able to get our insurance money. Fortunately, we were one of the lucky ones because many people lost their homes permanently and still suffer the damages of the Category 5 hurricane. In terms of business and school, I began working with my dad a week after the hurricane and went back to school after a month. I was a senior at the time, so they allowed our year to come in to use the Wi-Fi and apply to colleges. Overall, it was a tough experience for many, but I think everyone on the island learned a lot and bonded with the community around them. As stated by Keywords for Environmental Studies, environmental justice aims to describe a global network of social movements fiercely critical of the disparities and depredations caused by the unchecked expansion and neocolonial logic of fossil fuel-driven modern industrial development. In simpler terms, environmental justice is a movement that links environmental degradation with social justice in order to fight for and achieve sustainable human rights. It explores how low-income communities, communities of color, and colonized territories face the wrath of the burden of environmental degradation as well as the systemic oppression from the egocentric Western moral. This causes the non-human to be viewed without intrinsic value, and rather for human consumption. There can be an interlink found between those who do not fit this Western white male capitalist agenda and nature, since they face similar oppression in society. Many Puerto Ricans, especially those in rural areas, face this world-ending devastation with a somber recognition that they were left without the assistance of either the local or federal governments. Hurricane Maria made landfall on September 20, 2017, altering the physical and emotional landscape of Puerto Rico. The people of Puerto Rico faced two storms at once, one a natural disaster and the other man-made. For more than 500 years, Puerto Rico has had to withstand the immense pressure on its natural environment due to colonialism. Both Spanish and North American colonial economies have destabilized the ecosystem through extractivism, monoculture, and poor waste management. In 1898, the annexation of the island by the U.S. has only furthered this degradation. In 1920, the Merchant Marine Act directly hindered economic growth as it placed restrictions on the shipping to and from the island, which in turn led to higher food and fuel prices. Industrialization brought polluting and resource-hungry industries, such as pharmaceutical and agricultural chemical producers, that have seriously compromised air and water quality. Although Puerto Rico was preparing for the storm, they couldn't possibly be ready to face the exposure of a deep history of man-made oppressive systems. Due to a lack of maintenance funding, electrical and water infrastructure has faced a serious decline in the years prior to the storm. This led to increasingly regular power failures, significant increases in water pollution, and a long-term lack of adequate safety monitoring. Conditions that would only be made worse with the arrival of the storm. Natural disasters may be unbiased, but human-made disasters are not. The United States must take responsibility for insufficient action during the aftermath of Hurricane Maria and work on mitigating these inequities so that history does not repeat itself. When Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, it brought forth numerous impacts to communities across the island. Some survivors described the aftermath to be another dimension, a gloomy and sad place. Hurricane Maria was the strongest hurricane to hit the country in eight years, and when in a time of extreme crisis and devastation, politicians were nowhere to be found. With this being said, the local government was highly unprepared for the damages caused by the Category 5 hurricane, and as a result, the citizens experienced a wide range of effects, the most detrimental being the destroyed electrical grid. Nearly four months after the hurricane hit the island, around 30% of the population was still without electricity. As Edric mentioned, it took his family nearly three months to have their power restored. With the electrical grid being destroyed, this posed numerous problems, one of the most concerning associated with hospitals and nursing homes with high-risk patients. With no 
no power, accessibility to life-saving technology such as oxygen became limited, and patients who depended on these resources struggled. Another problem related to the widespread power outage was that ATM machines were down, forcing banks to dispense money by hand in order for citizens to be able to purchase necessary equipment and food, which usually entailed waiting in extremely long lines. Even if they were able to get food, there was still a lack of refrigeration which posed issues among a wide population. Luckily for Edric's family, their apartment had a generator that powered the plug to their refrigerator, but many other people did not have the same privilege. Along with this, the demand for generators increased rapidly, and so did the prices, making it extremely difficult for those in poorer communities to afford them. Another impact the hurricane had on Puerto Rico was that debris cluttered roads and the streetlights were all destroyed, which only further enhanced the dangers brought to the communities. When the country finally began its recovery, the government focused its primary attention on popular tourist areas, followed by coastal regions, and lastly, attending to the rural towns which were still greatly affected nine months after Maria hit land. The media claimed that the lack of response to Puerto Rico was due to its isolated location, which made it difficult for the government to deliver goods and supplies to the island quickly. But in reality, it only takes two hours by plane to reach the island from Miami, and slightly over three hours from New York. All in all, the impacts the island and its people experienced were mainly due to the minimal enforcement of environmental protection laws compared to those in mainland United States, which just led to unimaginable damages. Hurricane Katrina hit the southeastern United States in 2005 and exposed the lack of care from people in power towards those truly in need. One would think the U.S. would have learned and began to address these distinct environmental inequalities, and yet it seems as though all they have done is continue with business as usual. As climate-driven natural disasters continue to occur, and subsequently watching the way in which our government addresses the aftermath, it will become more apparent that our current ways of thinking are not sustainable. Our focus on material benefits and our deferral of responsibility onto other entities is morally and practically detrimental to the environment. Everyone is being affected by the climate crisis some more than others, and so it is the responsibility of all to solve it. As Edric said, some suffered more than others, but everyone had to deal with something. We all have a responsibility to our planet and to our fellow humans who share it.